I think there are three things that are hugely important to innovation that make Australia so attractive. The first is the natural talent. Lots of great people, both Australians and the many international students who've come to study in Australia. So this pool of very well-trained people and really sort of first-class minds. The second is a deep tradition of innovation. We don't think about ourselves that way, but you only have to mull Wi-Fi, the black box recorder, the bionic ear, and you can see a long tradition back to the stump jump plough and so on. A long tradition of innovation and of carrying that into industry. So again, although we don't think of Australia as a highly industrialised nation, actually we've got a long tradition of great industries that develop skills. And I guess the third is an openness to ideas. When you sit on the periphery of the world, you have to look outwards. And so Australians engage very early with new technology. They're very great adapters and adopters of new things that are new. And they're interested in new ideas. And that combination, seriously skilled people, a long tradition of translation of research into industrial product, and a natural curiosity, I think makes Australia a very interesting place for innovation. Only 2% of the world's population, and yet we punch above our weight. We do have a series of great innovations we can point to as examples of what Australia can do, but we've got lots of opportunities to take this further. The University of Melbourne has been engaged with India since independence, since this became one of the world's great nations. Many Indian companies are developing an interest in Australia, and they see Australia as a potential source of research as well as markets to sell into. And of course, we're interested in working side by side with Indian researchers, Very exciting. But the other way of doing this is to think globally. So one of the big research presence in India is IBM, who has a, a series of important facilities across India and a world-class laboratory in Bangalore, which has been some years in the building and does remarkable research. Well, the University of Melbourne works closely with IBM, which just a few years ago established its first and only laboratory in Australia at the University of Melbourne. And many of the people they've hired to run that laboratory have worked in Bangalore or are IBM staff who've been recruited from Bangalore. And this has created a great exchange of people and ideas and projects between Melbourne and Bangalore and between Australia and India. So not all research partnerships are just a university to a company or even one company to another. Global companies, and India has its own set of global companies and emerging powerful companies, uh, work across the globe and you can build into their programs something in Australia. So we see lots of opportunities, but very early days. I think India and Australia face some grand challenges together around public health, around the environment, around the economy, and research from both places and universities in both countries and from the University of Melbourne can be important in addressing those grand challenges. And so what I very much hope to see is the development of research where scholars from Australia spend time in India and vice versa, and students and PhDs, so that we build a group of people who know each other's countries well, who can identify similar problems and who can test how ideas developed in one nation might help in the other. And I think that's what a great research partnership brings. And I think the University of Melbourne can, along with other Australian universities, be a really important part of that dialogue, that exchange, that sharing of innovation that over time will benefit us both.